Life is not designed where you just wake up and see how it go and you react. You actually have a say so. You have a determining voice into where your life can go. You have no say so in what happens to you. But you have a say so in what you do about it. See, life is 10% what happens to you. It's 90% what you do about it. You ain't got to be washed white as snow. Because I didn't get that. I didn't get saved like that. I got washed, but I just got rinsed off. I did not get the washed white as snow version. I still got dirt on me. But show me something that has grown into something beautiful that didn't have no dirt on it. You take a seed and throw it on the concrete. Don't put no dirt on it and watch what happens. See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. Because dirt ain't just dirt. Dirt is fertilizer. Dirt is nutrients. Dirt gives you the strength for your seed to push through. See, you got to have dirt on you to push through something. Everything you see that's beautiful starts out as a seed. But that seed got to get dirt on it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because you get thrown off course. You get mad because you get a detour. That's just dirt. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You get mad because you, you lost your mama. That's dirt. You got to have dirt on you to grow into what God got for you. Quit tripping. And the reason I'm telling it to you, because when I was homeless, I told God, I said, if you let me make it, when I get there, I'm going to tell everybody about you. So now here I am right now. I'm telling you that it was him. It was not my education. It wasn't who I knew. It wasn't no deal I struck. It was cause of prayer. Because, man... I just kept praying. When it looked like I wasn't going to be nothing, I kept praying. I kept asking that God that my mama had told me about, if he could just do what he said he was going to do. You said, if I have not because I ask not, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to just keep asking. And when it looked like it ain't coming, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait on it anyway. When they told me you'll never be nothing, I didn't listen to him. I'm going to sit here until you get here. And guess what? He got here. See, God, he, he know what he's doing. You just got to get to ask. You have not because you asked. I was sitting in an airplane on a flight from Texas to California and looking out the window at the mountains and the desert far below. I was thinking to myself how until quite recently in the span of human history, Nobody had ever seen anything like this. None of the kings and queens, none of the warriors, none of the wizards. Nobody had ever been able to fly 40,000 feet in the air and look down on the mountains. How powerful we've suddenly become. Today all we have to do is buy an airline ticket and we can do something that no one back then ever dreamed would be possible. For a moment or two, all this gave me a real feeling of power. It felt really good looking down on everything. But then I thought, wait a minute, can I stop the plane or turn it around? Can I take a walk outside and then come back to my seat? I can't even take a walk around the plane unless the little light tells me it's okay. I can't even feed myself in here. In all my adult life, I've never been less powerful than I am at this very moment. I'm completely helpless. It's that way with wisdom too. When you think you really know something, stop for a second and see if the opposite isn't really true also. Do you think you're rich? Compared to whom? Maybe you're really poor. Do you think you're poor? Compared to whom? Maybe you're really rich. Of all the parts of our life we want to work well, perhaps the most important is lifestyle. Mr. Shope gave me one of his strongest concepts when he said, 
Don't just learn how to earn, learn how to live. And that's what lifestyle is all about. Learning how to live. Here's one of the great challenges of life. Being happy with what you have while in pursuit of what you want. Now consider this. Some people have plenty of beautiful things filling their days, but they get little happiness from them. Some people have money, but they have trouble finding joy in their lives. Picture a crowded subway car in New York City. Quite an experience, but not something I would recommend to the faint of heart. Hundreds of complete strangers jammed into a space designed for a third their number. All of them packed tighter than sardines and a little tiny can. Now suppose you're in that situation, and you've been on your feet all day, and you'd really like to sit down. But there are no seats left in the subway car, and you're standing there hanging from that metal bar that hangs from the ceiling. Do you suppose you could come up with something that would convince somebody to give you their seat? That's a pretty good test of wisdom, in my opinion. You'd have to be pretty wise to come up with something like that in a crowded New York subway car. Frankly, I don't think King Solomon could have done it. I don't think Socrates could have done it. I don't even believe that Einstein could have done it. But then it happens. Somebody convinces not just one person, but several people to offer their seat. People are actually competing to give up their precious seats in that crowded New York subway car. Who is this somebody? A pregnant woman. A very pregnant woman, in fact. People are scrambling to give her their seats. But you see, it wasn't really the woman who convinced them to do it. It was the baby inside. It was a tiny creature who couldn't even talk or even imagine the very idea of talking, who convinced these tough New Yorkers to stand up. Einstein couldn't have done that. Excuse me, my name is Albert Einstein. Perhaps you've heard of me. Do you think I could have your seat here in the subway? Never heard of you, Einstein, but get lost anyway. But I'm very wise. Yeah, well, you're wising off to the wrong guy. So am I saying an unborn baby is wiser than Albert Einstein? Maybe you should decide. But that baby certainly solved the problem. Here's a phrase that I'm pretty sure contains some important wisdom. If you've reached a point in life where you feel you've got all the answers, you better start asking some different questions. The fool is always reaching his intellectual destination. The wise man is always wondering how much further there is to go. The fool's viewpoint is always narrowing. He talks more and more, but he listens less and less all the time. He starts saying the same things, and that's because he's always thinking the same thoughts. If he's a powerful fool, people are eager to help him along in this, particularly if they're dependent upon him for their living. But they're laughing at him behind his back, and they're watching and waiting too for the moment when he finally becomes a vulnerable. Life in style is also life in balance. Make sure you pay attention to all the values and dimensions of your life. One is family. If you have someone you care about, there is no value to match that. One person caring for another is life in the best of style and value. Protect it with a vengeance. If a chair gets in the way, I suggest you destroy the chair. It was wisely said so long ago, but is still true for today. There are many treasures, but the greatest of these is love. Better to live in a tent on the beach and have a love affair than to live in a mansion by yourself. Ask me, I know. Family must be cultivated like an enterprise, like a garden. Time and effort and imagination, creativity and genius must be summoned constantly to keep it flourishing and growing. Next is friendship. A priceless value, friendship. Friends are those incredible people who know all about you and still like you. Friends are those people who are coming in when everyone else is leaving. And as someone once suggested, be sure to make the kind of friends on your way up 
who will take you in on your way down. Life is a bit of both up and down, but with true friends, friends who care regardless of your circumstances. The ups are more automatic and the downs less devastating. Let me give you just a few tips on time management essentials. First of all, you run the day or it runs you. A little simple analysis. It's not that difficult to get something started. And you run it for a while and after a while it starts running you. That's part of the challenge. I told my staff one day, giving birth to a tiger is one thing, learning how to ride it is something else, right? Sometimes you start it and then it turns around and starts giving you all kinds of trouble. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already eight, 10 hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, bursts at a time, you can work 12, 14, 16, right? And I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance or your health is in jeopardy and your heart's in jeopardy. Your blood pressure is in jeopardy. A lot of things uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard. It's not the hours you put in. It's what you put in the hours that counts. Now also you need a written set of goals, time management essential, priorities, good plan for the next 10 years, especially some of the things you want to accomplish. Let our dreams pull us through our objectives, sustain us, get us up early, keep us up late, learn, drive us to do the disciplines, read the books, take the classes, study, whatever is necessary and a constant review of your goals, because that's how you determine how to use your time, whatever priorities you're going for. Then you need a plan to achieve your goals and game plans, laying out six months, laying out a year. When you do business internationally, several corporations, we just formed our first Australian corporation. You just got to have game plans to lay all this stuff out. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Things get missed. Taxes don't get paid. The details don't get taken care of. You've got to learn to think on paper. And if there's one thing under time management we can get across that's major, uh, that one is it. There is a difference between passion and obsession. Here's how you know the difference between the two. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. Be passionate. Chase your passion. When you're obsessed, they're like, why are you gonna be so crazy? You're not trying hard enough. Turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. I'm saying listen to the truth. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80 percent, is it just a game or do you eat it? Do you sleep it? Do you drink it? Have you possessed the game? I ain't about to miss this opportunity. I'm about to get everything I got. And I will know if I don't get another gig, it won't have anything to do with the fact that I didn't put everything on the field. I'm trying to tell you, you can win. I'm trying to tell you, I don't care how big the giant is, you can win. I want you to go in confidence that you've never had before. And every giant in your life, slay him. You go back and slay him. Don't kill him, slay him.